Hold up. Hello, my name is Felicia Sanchez Carviso, and welcome to the Lucero Branch Library Storytelling um, Session. And I'm so excited to share a few of my, my favorite stories with you again today. Um, the first one I'm going to share with you is written by Joe Hayes. If you haven't noticed, Joe Hayes is one of my favorite storytellers ever. And this is one of my favorite stories because it involves something that is one of my most favorite foods ever. So the first story today is called The Day It Snowed Tortillas. Haven't you ever heard of that? So once there lived a poor but very hardworking woodcutter. He would work every morning, get up every morning really, really early, walk his boot all the way up the mountain and use that ax like no one else in the town. He would chop that wood and cut it so well that he would pile it up and take it straight to town and sell it. And that's how he made a living. Now, he wasn't very well educated. Even though he was a hard worker, he wasn't very clever. He would sometimes not make the best choices and sometimes would just go on and on and on and tell stories. And well, he never knew really what to believe. Thank goodness he had a very clever wife. One day, as he was headed back down the mountain after a good day's work, he noticed something sparkling by the side of the road. And when he got a little bit closer, he found a leather bag full of gold. There were three of them. And he grabbed the second one, looked inside, sure enough, full of gold. The third one, full of gold. He was so excited, he didn't even go to town. He went straight home. And as he got towards the house, he yelled out, Esposa! yelled out to his wife, 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 come here. Look, look at what I found. I found three bags of gold. Oh, oh my goodness, on the side of the road? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, do me a favor, don't tell anybody. That's wonderful, but this must be some type of robber's gold or something. And if you go tell everybody, well, they'll try to find us and they'll do anything to get their gold back, maybe even kill us. Please don't tell anybody. Oh, I'm not going to tell anybody. But the wife knew her husband, and he could not keep a secret for nothing. So she had to come up with a plan quick. Viejo, I know that you worked so hard today, and you found three bags of gold. But can you just please do me one last thing before you go lay down? What? I'm really tired. Can you please go to town and buy me... 100 pounds of flour? 100 pounds of flour? What do you need 100 pounds of flour? How much do you love me? Oh, he really did love his wife. So rather than argue with her, he went into town and bought 100 pounds of flour. And as soon as he got back, his wife got to work. Now, she said, thank you so much for everything you did. Now go lie down. You worked hard. It's time to rest. He liked that idea. So he lay down and had a good night's sleep. He slept all the way to the morning. But what he didn't realize is while he was snoring away, his wife was working hard. She was making tortilla after tortilla. She had stacks and stacks and stacks of tortilla. Tortillas all throughout the house. They went all the way up to the ceiling. And you know what she did? Can you imagine how wonderful that smelled? All those yummy tortillas. She got all of those tortillas. She went outside and she threw them all over the ground. Yeah, all the way over the ground. And that morning, when her husband woke up oh, to go give some water to the dog, he opened the door and he, he couldn't believe his eyes. Esposa, Rebecca, come here, come here, come here. What, what is this? Can, what, what, what is this? What is this? I don't understand. <gasps> Oh, as she walked towards the door, wiping her hands. Oh my goodness, it must have smelled tortillas last night. Huh? No tortillas? Oh, viejo, you know, you're not very educated. You, you didn't go to school very long, you know. Maybe you should go to school. You've never heard of it snowing tortillas? No, no, it snows tortillas. Why would it snow? He was just in shock that he didn't know that Somehow it's no tortillas. And so maybe he should listen to his wife. Don't worry, I'll pack you a lunch. 
And so she packed him a lunch and sent him off into town to go to school. Well, because he didn't know how to read or write, they started him in first grade. And everybody was sitting down. And, of course, they sat him in a nice little table and chair. But he didn't fit in the desk because he's too big. He was an adult. So he stood in the back of the classroom. All the kids were answering the questions and raising their hands because they knew everything that the teacher was talking about. And he didn't know nothing. He lasted about an hour or two, and he was out of there. He went back home, grabbed his burro and his axe, and he said, I'm going to go work. I'm done with that school today. Okay, whatever you want. Later on that day, just as his wife had suspected, all of a sudden, these three rough-looking robbers came up to the door. Senora, you know what? We know. We know that your husband found our three bags of gold. He had went into town yesterday and was telling everybody about how he found those three bags of gold. Buying flour and all this. Well, that, that gold is ours and we want it back. Gold? The wife said, I, he said that? I, I don't know about that. Are you sure? He loves to tell stories. You know, I've never heard about any type of gold. I don't think he found any gold. Well, we'll see about that. We're going to wait here till he comes back. And they did. They waited all day, sharpening their knives and cleaning their pistols, just waiting for him to come back. As soon as they saw him coming up down the mountain, they ran up to him and grabbed him by the shirt, roughed him up and said, Senor, we want our gold. We know you have it and we want it now. Gold? Oh, oh yeah, I remember. I, I, I remember. Uh, my wife hid it. Ho hold on. Esposa! Esposa! His wife came to the door. What? What'd you do with the gold? You remember? The gold. The gold? I don't know what you're talking about. You remember the gold? Remember? Like, you sent me to school? It was the day, you know, like right after. It's no tortillas. And then you sent me to school. Do you remember? I found it the day before. I don't remember. The robbers looked at each other as they were holding this old man, and they said, did he just say it's not our kids? I don't know. Did he say that his wife sent him to school? Yeah, yeah, that's what, uh, it's no tortillas. And then I remember that I went to school. I was in first grade, but I, uh, está loco. This, never mind, senor. We must have the wrong house or the wrong person. Sorry. Uh, sorry, senora. No problem. Come inside. Come and eat, she told her husband. Oh, okay. So he walked inside and those robbers left. And, well, from then on, it didn't really matter whether that man was clever or a hard worker because those robbers never came back because of his clever wife. And they lived happily ever after with three bags of gold. And that's the story of the day in Snow Tortillas. And that's a fun one because I can never imagine throwing tortillas all over the ground. But if it meant that you might have three bags of gold and you knew your husband really well, it might work. So the last story I'm going to tell is one of my favorites and from an author, a wonderful author who is actually a native of Pueblo Colorado. So her name is Patricia Santos Marc Antonio, and she wrote a wonderful story that you can find called Red Riding in the Hood and Other Cuentos. And this story is called Red Riding in the Hood. Mama packed a box with a tin of chicken soup, heavy on cilantro, a bowl of peppermint or a box of peppermint tea, some peppers from our garden, and a big white hunk of goat cheese that smelled like my uncle Jose's feet. That only meant one thing. Roja! <sighs> See, Mama, your abuelita's not feeling well, and I really need you to go take this to her today. Can you do that for me? <sighs> but, Mom, me and Lupe Maldonado, we're going to go to the movies. Excuse me? Who's more important, abuelita who's sick or Lupe Maldonado and the movies? <sighs> abuelita. And that's what I thought. You know... What would really make her feel better is if you wore that beautiful red dress that she made you. You should wear that. I couldn't say no because then I would feel guilty again. And 
I really didn't want to wear that, but I put it on. It was long and had a high collar and red and buttoned all the way up. I looked like the girl in Little House on the Prairie. But I grabbed the box. Okay, Roja, here's money for bus fare. I want you to take the bus. See mama. I don't want you to go anywhere else. See mama. I want you to go straight to Abuelitas. See mama, I know. And I don't want you going near forestry. Do you hear me? Yes, of course. You know what means trouble. Stay away from forestry. That's fine, all right. I waited, but she didn't have any more orders. So I went on my way. I grabbed the box and it was pretty bright out. It wasn't too bad. So I just decided like maybe I would just wear my shades because then maybe hopefully no one would recognize me wearing this get up and looking at stupida. But I decided that maybe I would also just save the money and not ride the bus. Because anyways, I was saving my change for this beautiful shirt that I saw in the Martinez clothing store. It was such a cute shirt. A number a whole lot cuter than this that I was wearing. But I decided to just walk instead. So I did. As I was walking along, it was really nice. I don't know why my mom said it was so weird. I don't know. As I kept going, I decided that because the box that I was carrying was so heavy, I could maybe take a shortcut. And then I looked up and I saw it. Forestry. I could hear my mom and her voice in the back of my head saying, stay away from forestry. Don't go near forestry. But I didn't listen. I mean, forestry got its name because it had the tallest trees in the whole barrio. They were tall and thick and blocking out the sun. But today it didn't seem too bad. I passed by two police officers that were just hanging out. They waved. Everything seemed fine. I don't know why Mama said it's so bad. It doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> but as I kept walking, I all of a sudden heard this loud blare of salsa music. And up rode this Chevy Lowrider with licks of, plain, licks of flame painted on the hood in blue and silver and suavecito written on the back. It was bumping up and down to hydraulics. And the driver's big, wide grin. And his ears were bouncing along with it. Well, I didn't look because I remember my mom telling me not to talk to strangers, but I heard something. All I heard was, hola, Red. I said, hola, Red. Um, how do you know my name? Well, you're wearing red, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. What you doing around Forest Street? You gotta be careful. A lot of bad dudes hanging around Forest Street, eh? Uh, like you? Not like it's any of your business, Lobo Chavez, but I'm going to visit my abuelita. She's not feeling very well today. Oh, you know, you should stop over there at that panaderia and get your abuelita some yummy empanadas with calabaza. She'll like them. Well, thanks, Lobo Chavez. Maybe I will. All right. Hope your old grandma feels better, eh? And off he rode with his hydraulics all the way down the street. Now, he was right about the panaderia. Those empanadas were so good. Oh my gosh. I got two of them. One for me and one for Abuelita, which I ate along the way. But by then, it was starting to get a little chilly and it was starting to get a little dark. So I hurried up and Abuelita's apartment was at the end of Forest Street. So I rushed up the top of the stairs and knocked on the door. But when I knocked, the door was kind of open and I could hear scurrying around. Abuelita, it's Roja. Are you in there? Entra, Roja. Wow, Abuelita, you really sound like you have a bad chest cold. As I entered Abuelita's apartment, oh my gosh, it smelled like that wonderful lavender soap that she used. But it also smelled like wet dog, which is weird because Abuelita's landlord doesn't let her have pets. Anyways, Abuelita, where are you? I'm in the room, Nieta. Jeez, she sounded bad. As I opened the door, the shades were drawn, the room was dark, and Abuelita was laying on my abuelita, uh, and Abuelita, not Abuelita, Lobo, was laying on my Abuelita's bed, wearing her clothes and her glasses. 
as if I didn't know he wasn't my abuelita. Now, instantly, I realized this is one dumb wolf, but at the same time, I thought, what did he do with my grandmother? And I realized how much I loved her, and I just didn't want anything to be wrong or to happen to her. So I decided to play alone. Oh, abuelita, my goodness, you really don't look good. I've never really noticed. Put the box on the table. I've never really noticed how big your orejas are. Oh, the better to see you, nieta. Mm -mm. And abuelita, wow, what big orejas you have. The better to hear you, nieta. Abuelita, I don't know. I, I, I thought I noticed last time, but I guess I didn't because, wow, what big dientes you have. Lobo licked his slobber around his mouth. He was waiting for this one. And he jumped out, leapt out towards me and said, The better to eat you with. But what he didn't realize is that as I walked over and set down the box, I grabbed that big white chunk of goat cheese. And as he leapt towards me, I shoved it in his mouth. And he said, Oh, this tastes like someone's dirty feet. Yuck. I ran to the door. Police, police, help. Those two police officers ran down the street and up the stairs and started chasing Mobile Chavez around my abuelita's apartment. Thank goodness he slipped on abuelita's nightgown and they apprehended him quickly. Where's my abuelita, Lobo Chavez? She wasn't here. I was going to eat her. I was going to eat you. I was going to eat her for dessert. That's what I do. That's my job. Oh my gosh, officers, I can't believe this. And just then, my abuelita walked in. Abuelita, where have you been? Oh my gosh, what is happening here? Abuelita said, well, that lobo, he was going to eat us. I thought he had already eaten you, but I couldn't find you anywhere. Where were you, Abuelita? Well, I was feeling better, so I went out for a quick game of bingo. Officers, please take that off of that lobo. Take my nightgown off of him, please. He is getting hair all over it. Don't worry, senora. We're going to take care of this lobo. We are taking him in, and he's going to be locked away for a long time. The only thing he's going to be able to eat is oatmeal. Oh, come on. By then, they already had him apprehended. Cuffs on his hands. And the police officer looked over at me. And you, young lady, for your bravery, I think you deserve these. And he threw me the keys to Lobo's lowrider. I was so happy. Not Lobo, though. Oh, come on. Not my ride, eh? Yeah. See you later, Lobo Chavez. As they took him away, I looked down at Abuelita. Oh, my gosh, Abuelita. I'm so glad that you're okay. Me too. You have to be careful. You need to keep your eyes and ears wide open. Even if they're not as big as that Lobo's over there. Now, what did you bring me, Roja? Well, I just brought you some soup and pepper, some peppermint tea, um, the white goat cheese that saved our lives. <laughs> Is that the goat cheese that smells like your Uncle Jose's feet? Yeah, but <laughs> Okay, I'm going to grab my sweater. How about we go get some Chinese, Roja? That sounds good, Abuelita. That sounds good. I hugged her so tight and was so grateful that she was okay. And, well, Abuelita and I rode off down Forest Street. Hydraulics and all bumping down the road. And as for me, well, I never had to ride down Forest Street again. And that's the story of Red Riding in the Hood. And if you would like to read more stories by Patricia Santos Marc Antonio, just look her up or visit the library. Thanks so much.